Now our implementation has been completed and from VLAN 10 here, VLAN 10 PC, VLAN 10 PC, we can use the SVI on the outside here. They are passing through the Nexus VPC, DSC happens to be the default gateway from the Debian router to the, to the outside. So that's fine. So I want us to do some tests, some failover tests, so they won't be able to do much, be able to go more granularly because this is a virtual emulation and it's not all, it doesn't always give um, a better result like the uh, physical, when you are doing it on the physical, uh, on the physical way. But we'll try some basic tests. So I will say ping, continuous ping. I'm going to do it in TCP mode. That will be minus three and I'm going to ask it to wait. Wait time is going to be one milli. Okay, let me do it two milliseconds. So that means after it sends this request, it's going to wait for a reply. It's supposed to get a reply within two, two seconds. If it doesn't, it times out. That's it. Let me even change it to one. One. Okay, that's fine. Um, well done. So if it doesn't get response within one second, it times out. So right now this is my active ESC, but I'll do something. So on my Nexus, on the two Nexus, I'm going to shut down port channel 200, which will bring down this port channel 200, which will bring out, down the old port channel here. So we should experience feel over to this guy. So what I'm going to do is this. That face port channel 200 I'm going to shut it interface port channel 200 I'm going to shut it now come back here you can see it's now timing out ok now the timeout is 1 second time is 1, 2, 3, 4 oh man ok let's see what's happening on our ASA this guy is still the active no failover is happening. Show failover. And the interface I've been monitoring right now is testing this. So let's see. Now it has seen that primary has failed. And secondary is active. Okay. Now. On this also, I'll stop. So now the field over this is active before, but now it has failed because the whole outside interface, port channel, or whatever is down. So secondary now has become active. So you can see here switching to active. So that's why, but during that time, we have that means this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds timeout. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that ten seconds timer. So that's fine. So now I want to try and tune, tune it more. So what I'll do, I'm doing before I do that. Let me show the interface. So that. VPC. Okay, I think it's up now. No shot. Show VPC. Oh, fine. So let me go to my active switch. Switch the active ASC now. Can confirm that. Uh, so this is reporting the last failure. The reason and the time. Blah blah blah. So show failover. This is my failover configuration. Oh no. Sure, on failover, we don't want really to take much time like the other time, which you have like 10 seconds timeout. 
I want to try and reduce it. Show run fillover. Okay, let me do show run all fillover. Yeah, I'm going to reconfigure this. This is fillover pull time for interface. Pull time for the interfaces should be five seconds, and it has a time of 25 seconds. So that's too much. So it after uh, pull time every five seconds, it tells the interface. And if after 25 seconds there's no response, it's now fills over. So I'm going to change it. Let the pull the interface. I'm going to change it to milliseconds. And um, it's config T. Milliseconds. She pull the interface every. Let me see. Okay, let me see every 500. That's the lowest. Oh, no. Any any five hundred five times seventy five seconds. Okay. So by default, send the set the old time to five seconds. Let me do show run all fill over because I didn't specify. Let me see old time. Did I did it at five seconds. Yeah, five seconds is cool. So. Every 0 0.5 seconds, that's 500 milliseconds, it pulls the interfaces, the interface that we are monitoring. So, and if it doesn't get response from any interface for within five seconds, then it triggers failover. Okay, that's what. Sure enough, failover pull time unit one pull time. I can also change this to five seconds for the unit for the device itself. So it should run all fill over. Okay, this is a good one. Let's leave it that way. And now ASC2 is the active device. Is the active device so an ESC2 is con is plugged to port channel 201 the next source 201 201 so I'm going to show down 201 here 201 here so I'm going to in initiate my my TCP ping again Interface port channel 201 short interface port channel 201 short now let's go to DSC. Oh, this guy has switched to active now. Fine. This has switched to standby. Fine. This is now responding. Excellent. You can see now our timeout initially we had 10 seconds timeout but now the timeout is three seconds and now you can see that the switchover happens more faster happens more faster than before so switching to active so that's fine so ASC one is now the active ASC. This guy is not active. So this guy failed. The reason why it's not showing standby ready, why is it because the interfaces are still down or the port channel is still down. So that's why. You can see here. So now I'm going to bring up the port channel. You can do show VPC. You can see it's, it's down. No shots. Shot. Show VPC. Okay, it's all up now. Show fill over sequence is now standby ready instead of fill, uh, instead of field like we have here because the interf uh, the port channel is now helped, the interface is helped, so now it's changes standby ready. 
So now I'm going to let me send my TCP ping again. And this time around on my external, which one is active now? Okay, this AS1 is now active, so I'll shut down interface Ethernet 00. zero. Bam. So let's see. That's going to take to okay, that switch to standby now. And this has switched to active. So this here we have just like two seconds, just to time out. Just like two seconds timeout. That's what we have here. Although in the normal in production or when you are or when you are using physical device, you can trim it down, you can get more better better results. But now shutting down when the outside interface goes down, we only have two seconds of timeout. So within two seconds the failover takes effect. And normally another thing you should notice that in a typical when you're using an address device and when you are, for example, you're having normal TCP, let's say I'm running TCP on port 80, maybe I'm accessing, maybe I'm, for example, this, I enable IP HTTP server on this external switch. And this guy is trying to access maybe a website or whatever on this switch or out on the outside interface. For TCP, you may not experience any timeout for real TCP in a real world scenario when you are using hardware uh, physical devices, you may not experience this timeout. You may not experience this timeout. But here, although it's TCP, but it's, it's still in form of ping. So because normal TCP, there will be replication. There will be what we call a uh, session replication. Show fill over. You can see here TCP connection. We are not there is no replication because we are not having real TCP. It's not a real TCP. So we are not, having, but normally on a normal real life scenario, we are going to be accessing maybe a web server. Maybe we have a telnet session from, from this uh, PC to the external switch, or maybe we have an SSH session, something like that. And then we are going to have I mean, a better result. Even if we were doing the field over when the interface goes down, the port channel goes down, the user will not even notice because that's how it's supposed to work. For TCP, the end user is not supposed to notice that there's no field over. But because here we are using a kind of TCP ping, so that's why we can still see two seconds. And But when we are using proper TCP uh, traffic, we are not going to experience, uh, we are not going to experience, we are not supposed to experience any timeout at all. Yep. Well, no, it's standing. Let me try this. I've never tried it, so I'll just see if it's going to work. Uh, I don't know. Username. Let's go password. Ability wise, for transport input internet. Uh, okay, let me see password. Uh, okay, let me see login local. Um, enable password. Show section line VTY. Let me see if this will work. And I'm going to say check. I've never tried this, but. Let's see if it's going to work. That'll be 30.1.1.30 on port 23. Go back to the starting point where we last disconnected from. Oh, oh, oh. Let me. Okay, it's supposed to work. Let me 
you see that's not working. Something we lost it. Shape collection. Okay, let me, I'm going to pause this video. Let me see if I can bring in a physical host. I think that will help. So now I've plugged in a Windows 7, a Windows 7 device, which is also on VLAN 20. And this is the Windows 7 device. And it's having the IP address 192.168.20.201. So from this device, let me turn it to 30.1.1.30. Is our name Cisco? Password Cisco. Enable Cisco. So that's fine. So now I can connect from this. Uh, let me just bring it here. So from this host, I can turn it to this external device. And don't forget which is the active. Now ES1 is active. Okay, fine. So what I'm going to do now. I'm going to, since ES1 is active, show field of our states. Okay, active. ES1. So I'm going to shut down this interface so there can be fill over. So I'll go to external interface internet zero zero. I'm going to shut. Let's see. Okay, it's switching to standby. And this should have switched to active. And let's go to you can see my tenant session is intact i'm not disconnected from my tenant session so that's that's good that's good for us and you can see here you can see that we now have tcp connection being transmitted three being received five now because now we have a proper TCP connection which is telnet so that can be seen now so now that TCP connection is being replicated from here because initially it's established on ESA1 which happens to be the active before and the session is being replicated through the state link that is true this link Ethernet 3 is being replicated to the standby device which is with app, app, which happens to be ASA2 but now ASA2 has uh, now there's a fail over ASA2 has now taken the active position but already has the state connection uh, already it already has a state connection before the fail over so that's why we don't have any disconnection on our telnet application which is already in place so that's why I'm trying to say that in a real in a kind of real world real life situation or scenario you may not experience any disconnection kind of reward when it comes to tcp and udp user may not know that something happened and sometimes again your tenant session may just freeze for maybe one or two seconds sometimes it happens like that but you won't get disconnected and it start responding again so that's it so now let me just quickly do one more test like I did before. Let's see how it works when we shut down the port channel. So this is standby now. Okay, that's fine. ES1 is now standby. But meanwhile, show fill over state. This guy's field. Let me bring it back up. 
um, external the shorts. So now it should be standby ready now. When I run the command, run the command again. Oh, it's still showing if you want to come up. Share the camera. Why is it not coming up? Okay, the link is not up. We show IP interface brief. The link is up. Should come up now. Okay, standby ready now. So now, ESA2 is active. Show failover state. ESA2 is the active device. There is a second unit, but it's the active device. Fine. So ESA2 is operating on port channel 201. So I will shut down port channel 201. Where is it? Okay. Top is for channel 201. Let me shut everything down. This guy. So we have fill over. Okay, it has switched to active. You can see I still have my section. Should run. So that's what I'm trying to explain that in a real life scenario where you have, for example, now I have a real PC and I'm running a real TCP, um, whatever TCP application, which is Telnet. So now you can see that the failover is kind of seamless. The user, me, I as a user, or this Windows 7 as a user, is not aware of whatever is happening. Maybe there's a failover or whatever is not aware. So the failover is kind of each free one and it's smooth. So that's it. And I believe this tutorial session, I believe we've learned a lot in the course of this tutorial session. Thank you very much for watching.